So you can cross the horizontal asymptote because what it actually describes is it describes the end behavior. So that means the y value that your function is approaching as you are going towards either positive infinity or as your x's are going to negative infinity. So this is just an example of a sketch that actually looks pretty similar to the one that I had you uh, examining there. Um, it, this one has a horizontal asymptote at positive 2. So what that means is as our x values are headed toward positive infinity, as we follow this graph as far to the right as we can, our graph is leveling off right here on top of positive 2. As we approach negative infinity, as we go as far to the left as we possibly can, our graph is leveling off here right under positive 2. Now in this case, your function will never, in this particular function, it will never actually equal 2. Um, but it is a possibility that you can cross the horizontal asymptote. That will make more sense later. So, how do we find our horizontal asymptotes? What we do is we compare the degree of the denominator to the degree of the numerator. And by degree, I'm referring to the exponents. So in this case, if your top degree is less than the bottom degree, for example, x squared or x to the fourth, the bottom is a lot bigger than the top, you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Let me explain why. We're talking about going to infinity, right? So if we're plugging in infinity, infinity squared, yeah, that's a big number, right? But infinity to the fourth is an even bigger number. Well, what happens when you divide by a really, really big number? What's the result? A really small number. So that's why our horizontal asymptote is zero in that case. Because you're dividing by such a massively large number that overall, this entire thing is getting closer and closer to zero. Okay? Now, Obviously, when you're right around the y-axis here, that's not true because you're dealing with very, very small numbers. But as your numbers get bigger, the bottom is much bigger than the top, so it approaches zero. Yes, ma'am? Oh, you can't touch this asymptote? Because that's vertical asymptotes. We'll talk about that one more. <coughs> okay. Second case. If your degrees are equal, for example, 3x cubed plus 1 over x cubed plus 6, the largest exponent is 3, then you do the ratio of the coefficients, of the leading coefficients. You compare the number in front of uh, the biggest one in the top and the biggest one in the bottom. In this case, it would be 3 over 1. So this function would have a horizontal asymptote at 3. The reason why? x cubed over x cubed, those are the same amounts, so they cancel each other out. You're just dealing with the 3 over the 1. Okay? Yes? Is that why the horizontal asymptote in that one was 2? Yes. That's why right here, when we looked at it, that gap kind of looked like it was at, at y equals 2. Okay? Um, because here, you've got x squared over x squared and 2 over 1. Uh, it is possible for that to be a fraction. Okay? You can... Um, if the two were on the bottom, then you would have a horizontal asymptote at, at one, one half degree. Okay? And another note to mention, when you're identifying these, you do have to write it like the equation of y. You need to write it y equals 0, y equals 3. Okay? You need to write it that way um, because it is representing a horizontal line there. Okay? Last scenario, if the top is greater than the bottom, you do not have a horizontal asymptote. You possibly have a slant asymptote. We'll talk about that probably when we get back from spring break. Um, but the reason why is because x to the fifth, you're raising infinity to the fifth power, massively huge number. Yeah, you're squaring it on the bottom, but it's not nearly as big as it is on the top. So when you divide a really, really, really big number, by a not so big number, you're still getting a very big number. So you're not headed towards one specific value. That's why we do not have a horizontal asymptote in that case. Okay? Now, I went through those explanations. Some of you, yeah, you're just going to memorize this. Okay? You are. Um, but if you understand why, it will help you in the long run. Okay? If you just got to memorize it, then do whatever you got to do. But if you understand it, it definitely, definitely helps later on.
Okay, so let's do a couple of examples here. Okay, let's determine the horizontal asymptote, if there is one, there may not be one, of each one. We've got 2x over 3x squared plus 1. Well, the bottom is bigger than the top, so we're dividing by a really, really big number, and the result is going to be 0. So y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote of that first example. The second one. Now, I purposefully did not write this in standard form because your functions will not always be in standard form. So you can't always just look at the first term in the numerator and the denominator. You've got to look at what term has the highest powered exponent. So in the top, we have 2x squared. In the bottom, we have 3x squared. So those are the same. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2 over 3. The last example, degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator, so we have none. So horizontal asymptotes are always the first one that I look for because they're the easiest ones to determine. We don't have to factor. We don't have anything to do. We just got to look at the degrees. Okay? Let's talk about the next one, holes. Okay? Holes. Holes... As we saw in that very, very first example that I have you do, that is created by a factor that cancels. So after you figure out what cancels, you set that equal to zero to find out your x value. Um, then we're going to turn around and we're going to plug it back into the function to find out where its y value would be if it wasn't missing, if it weren't a hole. Um, you can't actually see that on the graph. Okay, when we were looking at this function right here, it didn't look like there was anything weird going on at 3. It looked like it was just normal, um, continuous function. So you can't actually see it on a graph, but it will show up as an error. And its official name is, it's called a removable discontinuity, because we could remove the problem. We could fill the hole. We could put one single point right there and fix the problem. So that's why it's called a removable discontinuity. Because uh, it's just a single itty bitty little problem. Vertical asymptote, different story. But we're just talking about holes right now. Okay, so let's put them two. Let's put the two things together. Let's determine the horizontal asymptote, and then we'll also talk about uh, the hole as well. So vertical asymptote. Excuse me. Horizontal asymptote of this first example. What is it? None. We have none because the degree of the top is greater. So no horizontal asymptote. We have to factor to find the holes. That numerator is the difference of perfect squares that factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. So the x minus 1s are going to cancel. We set the canceled factor equal to 0 to solve for the x value of the whole. So we have a whole at x equals 1. I want to know what would its y value be if there were not a hole there. Well, what I do is I take the simplified version. Okay, When we simplify this, we, we are left with just x plus 1. We take our x coordinate and we plug it into that simplified version, and that will give us the y value. So the simplified version was x plus 1. Our hole was at x equals 1, so we plug in 1 for x, so we get 2. So our hole is at the point x equals 1, y equals 2. Now, I do want to show you what this graph would look like really quickly. Um, if I plug this in, x squared minus 1, make sure you put it in parentheses over x minus 1. When we graph it, it's not curved and stuff like the other one is. Because it's simplified form, x plus 1 is the equation of a line. So it's going to look like the simplified version, except when we look at the table, we're going to see an error at x equals 1. And you can tell that the point that should be there is 2, because we're counting by 1's there. So the point should be 2. Okay? Let's do another one. Ooh, what kind of factoring do we need to do on number two? 
Groupy. Yay. Y'all didn't forget. All right. So take the GCF out of the first pair. That is x squared. We are left with x minus 6. What do we need to take out of the second pair? A negative. A negative. Very good. The bottom. We've got x plus 3 times x minus 1. Put our GCFs together in the numerator. We're not quite to the point where we can cancel, though. We've got x squared minus 1 in the numerator. We only have x minus 1 in the denominator. Well, if we factor that x squared minus 1, the difference of perfect squares, then we will be exactly where we need to be. We can cancel an x minus 1 in the top and in the bottom. So we have a hole at the same place as the previous problem. It is at positive 1, but it is not going to have the same y value. So I'm just going back and up, up here and rewriting my simplified version after I canceled that because I'm going to plug in the x-coordinate of my hole. So I've got 2 times negative 5 over 4. So the y-coordinate is negative 5 halves. So this hole is at 1, negative 5 halves. And I forgot to do the horizontal asymptote. Do we have one? No. You can look at the original or you can look at the simplified version. How did I what? I plugged 1 in my simplified version. So that's negative 5 So it, it really is just that. that.